Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we set up the animated indicators to show which slide we're currently viewing, so make sure you check that out first. Today's video will create the next button that will animate a circular progress bar around the button, as well as be able to click on it to scroll forward in the list. Let's get to coding. Starting where we previously left off, we're displaying a horizontal flat list with a carousel effect, as well as an indicator component to show which slide we're on. Let's add a new component for the next button and add some boilerplate. Import it into the onboarding component and render it. In the next button, we'll need some variables, the size, which controls the overall size of the button, the width of the stroke that will show the progress, the center point and the radius. To make an SVG, we'll need to pull in the React Native SVG package, and we'll import SVG, G, and circle from it. We'll add one more variable for the circumference. Now let's create the SVG with a width and height of size, and then create a circle with a light gray color. This will be the circle that sits under the progress bar, as you can see. The progress bar will be similar, but we'll add a stroke dash array and stroke dash offset property. The offset will eventually take in the percentage of the progress using this equation, but for now we'll hard code the percentage to 25. Using the dash array and offset will allow us to make a partial line around the circle. You can see though that the offset doesn't actually start at the top of the circle like we'd want, so we'll need to rotate the whole thing by negative 90 degrees. If I change the percentage to 60, now the progress will be 60% around the circumference. Pretty cool. Let's import an icon to use for the button. If you aren't using Expo, you can install the React Vector Icons package or use any asset that you'd like. We'll make a button and use the icon. Make sure to import touchable opacity and give it some styles. On to the animation part, let's import use effect and use ref and get rid of the text component and import animated. Progress animation will be a reference to a new animated value and getting its current property. And we'll also add a reference to the progress circle itself. Let's add an animation function, which accepts a value that we want to animate to, and return an animated timing function that uses the progress animation. And make sure to start it. Back in onboarding, let's pass in the percentage of the flat list. We get that by adding the current index plus one and multiplying that by 100 divided by the length of the slides array. And accept that prop in the next button. Add the first of two use effects, which we'll call the animation function and pass in the current percentage, making sure to add the percentage as a dependency. In the second one, we'll add a listener to the progress animation. This will create a smooth animation instead of going straight from one value to the next. We'll create the stroke dash offset using the same calculation as we hard coded earlier, but this time use the value that is being returned from the listener. Let's check to make sure the progress ref has been initialized, and if so, set the stroke dash offset property of the progress circle to the value we just calculated. And again, make sure to add percentage as a dependency. We can also get rid of the previously hard coded prop. Now check it out, we've got a super smooth animation whenever the slides change. It works going both forwards and backwards. Now in the onboarding component, let's make a function so that the button can actually move the slides forward. Check if the current index is less than the length of the slides array minus one, meaning do we have any slides left to go? And if we do, call the scroll to index method on the flat list, passing it the current index plus one. If we're at the end of the slides, for now let's just console log that. We'll be adding that functionality in the next video. And pass that scroll to function to the next button component and accept the prop. All we need to do now is call that function with the on press event of our button. You can see that the button will now control the movement of the flat list. How cool is that? Because everything is tied together, the button progress, the indicators and the flat list all move as one now. A couple of house cleaning things, let's make sure to return a function in the use effect to clear all the listeners whenever this component unmounts, and also give it an empty dependency so it only runs when the component first mounts. So that'll do it for today. I hope you learned something from this. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below, 
Make sure you're subscribed. In the final video next week, we'll wrap all this up with the actual onboarding functionality using async storage so that this onboarding component will only show the first time a user opens your app. Hope you're all having a great day. Go code something awesome. A huge thank you to Lawrence, Raphael, Good, Nabil, Jonathan, Marwin, Michael, Esco, Kevin, Joseph, Hassan, Felix, along with all my other patrons. You're all amazing.